One of the mistakes we make, we, we spend everything we make. You know, the savings rates in America are dismal and people don't save. I don't advocate saving for the long term. I advocate saving for your next investment. One of the things that Robert and I did early on is we called it the, the three piggy banks. And what we did is this was a time when we had very little money. We had more money going out than was coming in. But we made a rule that with every single dollar that came into our household, we would take 30% off the top before we paid any bills. That money comes in 10% into a savings account, 10% into an investment account, and 10% into a tithing or charity account. And we did that religiously with every single dollar. And it was amazing how fast it built up. And it was amazing how fast you figured out how to pay those bills. When you get into the habit, it's not how much. It's not necessarily you have to put 10, 10, 10%. It's the habit of putting that money aside because it will grow really, really quickly. And that can be your first investment funding for you. When you think of investing, the first thing that comes into mind is this complicated world of the stock market. With so many charts and numbers, it's easy to get confused. So let's break it down and try to make a sense out of it. Let's say you have built a business, but now you need some more money to expand. Or maybe you just want a private jet. Where do you get the money from? Here is an idea for you. Why don't you break down your company and sell parts of it, while you keep the majority to stay in charge? That's what stock market is for, and this process is known as initial public offering. But how much money can you actually raise? Let's take an example of Mark Zuckerberg's little toy, Facebook. It went public in 2012 with 337 million shares at a price of $38 a share. Not bad, right? But when he realized that there are so many more people who want a piece of his pie, he added another 84 million shares. And guess what? He sold every single one of them and raised $16 billion. He literally became a billionaire in just a few hours. In fact, the stock price increased to $45 within the first day of trading. But it was too early to celebrate because it fell back to $38 by the end of the day. And that was just the beginning. The bad news were just starting. In the next few weeks, the stock price crashed to as low as $20, twice smaller than its original price. Now, in order to understand what's happening here, we have to get to the roots of the stock market. In the past, stocks were acquired primarily for dividends. Theoretically, when you buy a stock, you become the owner of that company which means that you, like any other owner, have the right to the profits of the company. Congratulations, you have purchased 10 Facebook stocks in January of 2017, and now you are the owner of Facebook exactly like Mark. And I'm not kidding here, try not to laugh. So your company makes $16 billion. How much of that belongs to you? At the end of the day, you have spent $1,300 to buy your 10 stocks. But let's first take a look at how much stocks are there in total. It turns out that there are almost 3 billion of them. I doubt that your 10 stocks matters now. But let's be optimistic. Because if we divide the net income on the number of shares, each stock should earn you a little over $5. By the way, that's known as EPS. In other words, your 10 stocks supposed to earn you $54. Not bad, right? But that's just hypothetically. In practice, you get absolutely nothing. The board of directors is the ones who are going to decide what to do with this money. And their first priority is to fill their pockets and expand the company. So no one really cares about your 10 stocks. But don't worry, not everyone is a scammer like Mark Zuckerberg. For example, last year Apple paid $13 billion in dividends, or $2.5 for each stock. Of course, it's not much for a stock that costs $170, but something is always better than nothing. However, today it doesn't really matter how much the company pays as much as the price of the stock itself. Apple stockholders experienced a 33% gain within a single year. That's way better than market's average. You probably have heard that Apple is the first company to cross a trillion dollar valuation because its stock price crossed $200. But what if I told you that until the June of 2014, Apple's stock price was $645. 
Does that mean that the company was already valued at more than $3 trillion? Oh God, the stock market is so freaking complicated. Let me explain. There is something called stock splits. Each stock was split into seven pieces and the prices were decreased proportionally. Technically, nothing really changed, but now more people can afford the stock and join the community of Apple investors, since the stock now costs only $92. But not all companies do that. Some prefer to only work with serious people, such as Warren Buffett. His company, Bershka Hathaway, has never split their stocks. That's why it only has 1.7 million shares. In comparison, Apple has 5 billion. That's why a single Buffett stock cost over $300,000. I guess most of us will never join Buffett's secret investor society. But don't worry, Buffett wouldn't mind taking your money as well. That's why he created Class B shares, which are more affordable. The topic of the stock market never ends, but this video has to. As always, hit the subscribe button and the bell besides it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.